leaders of the more than 850 million people in Latin America and Europe who speak Spanish and Portuguese had gathered in the Dominican Republic under the banner of creating a more just and sustainable Ibero-America. Yet it was the passionate plea for military intervention in French-speaking Haiti, which has been overrun by criminal gangs, that took the summit by surprise. Here we are on the same island of a failed state with unbridled violence, and the world is again looking the other way. And as a Costa Rican, I think it's unfair to ask the Dominican Republic to send its troops to its neighboring country. This is a global responsibility, and we are ignoring our responsibility. The only way to deal with Haiti is to pacify it. The only way to help Haiti is to pacify it. The call came on the heels of a meeting between U.S. and Canada, who reportedly also debated the option of sending a stabilizing force to Haiti. Summit leaders tried primarily to focus on concrete measures to offset the ravages of climate change, of the increase in hunger in the region, and also the digital divide. But it wasn't long before sharp divisions amongst them came to the surface. Chile's president lashed out at Nicaragua's president, who did not attend, for the banishment of hundreds of opponents. The dictatorship in Chile taught us in the most brutal way the risk of seeing human rights as something relative. Never under any pretext can we allow exceptions. That's why, esteemed colleagues, we believe it is unacceptable to remain silent about the family dictatorship of Ortega and Murillo in Nicaragua. Colombia's Gustavo Petro said that the imprisonment of Peru's former president, Pedro Castillo, was equivalent to a coup because he was deposed without a proper trial. In the end, there was at least consensus on the need to continue working together on what they can agree on, with Spain and Portugal promising to bring the voice of Latin America closer to Europe. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santo Domingo.